Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Maximum Football Game of the Week featuring the second-ranked Amherst Mammoths taking on the 21st-ranked Middlebury Panthers. This game is brought to you by Canuck Play, who is the creator of Maximum Football as we are getting ready to take the coin toss here. It's be interesting to see uh, who win this coin toss here in this game. Amherst, as the visiting team, they are going to take the coin toss. You can see uh, Millbury's team. And Amherst is actually going to win the, the coin toss. And looks like... And it looks like Amherst is going to receive the ball to start this game. So, we are excited to have you guys here for... The maximum football game of the week as Middlebury will start to kick start this game off with the kickoff to this inaugural season of the all created teams dynasty. Very first play of the game looks like uh Korak's gonna try to hand it off, but he immediately gets met in the backfield by the defensive line. Middlebury defensive tackle is able to go right in there. And just kill that play before it even happens. So now they have this second and 16, which is completed for an extremely long pass. 45 yard gain on the play. And that is a huge play for the Amherst Mammoths very early on in this ball game. Putting them in Middlebury territory, but on the next play, it's met with an interception. And Middlebury, for their first possession of the game, is going to go on the 40 yard line. So. Millbury's going to start with some great field position to work with here. But Amherst is actually going to get the ball back extremely quickly. They get an interception of their own here. As uh, Amherst now has this first and 10 here with Middlebury going offside. So now they have a first and five. And after the one yard run, uh, Amherst is going to go ahead and run it right up the gut. Halfback in Cargo. Cargo is his last name, funny enough. He's going to get the first down. Very next play, they're going to call a quarterback run up the middle. Kobo is going to take it up the middle right for a gain of seven yards, which sets up this third and one where Amherst tries to pick it up by the ground, but Middlebury was ready for it, and they uh, actually have to pile it away because they uh, were just outside of field goal range. So that was a big win for Middlebury, definitely as they took the sack early on. As Polis drops back the pass, third and 16, it's thrown right up the middle, and it was almost picked off there, but it's going to end up falling harmlessly to the ground. Millbury had to deal with the free and out. Third and 12 now for Amherst has been a, quite a defensive struggle early on, and the quarterback just gets absolutely thrown across. I'm really surprised that it wasn't a roughing the passer penalty but you know both teams early on are just having a difficult time uh getting the a lot of ball movement as Middlebury they can't quite get the pitch going there on that uh first down play so now they face a third and 23 we're just gonna go ahead and check it down for a gain of a few yards but Middlebury is gonna have to punt it away so, you know, not a lot of game action early on for this uh, installment of the game of the week, but that might change as Frodoff gets behind the defense and burns the, looks like the linebacker, and Amherst right there is going to take a 7 to nothing lead as Middlebury is just trying their bench, tr trying to find any sort of offensive rhythm, and they simply have not found it just yet as Amherst still has the 7 to nothing lead. But Millbury defensively, besides that one big pass play up the right seam, um, they've been playing extremely well on the defensive end as both teams early on are just throwing punches at each other, you know, really still feeling each other out just a little bit as we're getting towards the end of the first quarter and we only had one, actually a couple of massive plays, but it's picked off again this time by Brando. He's able to break a couple of tackles. And just like that, ladies and gentlemen, Amherst has the ball back. And they are inside the 35-yard line, ready to set up this deep shot in the end zone. But of course, the touchdown will be disavowed. 
because of a holding on the offensive line. So now instead they have his third and 19. Kobo is going to go up the right seam. He has his man, but I don't think he was 100% ready for it as he drops the pass. So a golden opportunity wasted by Amherst to make this a two touchdown game. But, you know, and but instead they are going to go without any points whatsoever, which is extremely disappointing if you're an Amherst fan on the road trying to make a statement early on against a fellow ranked Division Three football team in the Middlebury Panthers. Middlebury, on the other hand, still has this 7 to nothing lead. It's going to throw it up the middle to Pol Polis? Polis? Yeah, I think that is his name. Uh, if I'm butchering that, uh, someone can let me know down in the comments. But Viles is going to get a nice tough run. Goes for more than 10 yards. Notice that running has been pretty difficult in these uh, CPU matchups here today. But rise of right now, Middlebury was getting the ball moving. Thought they might have find a rhythm. But just like that, the drive will stall and Amherst will have the ball right back in the hands of Kobo and the Amherst offense. As now they face this second and four. Very next play, Kobo is going to hand it off to Cargo right up the middle. And Cargo is able to get a nice little tough run. Able to get just enough for the first down. Sets up a front set of downs for Amherst. But then on this next play, he actually gets sacked by... Looks like Reddy. Reddy is his last name. There's, there's definitely been some interesting names in Amherst. Just absolute miscue. And it leads to Middle, uh, Amherst playing the ball away. And Middlebury is going to get some fantastic field position. But can't seem to do anything with it. It's just been the tail of the tape thus far. Of course, there is still plenty of time to get the ball rolling as... Amherst is still having trouble themselves getting anything going in this ball game. As Polis, he's going to go up the middle, do a little spin move, and go right up the gut for seven yards. Very next play, Polis is under center. He hands it off to Coleman, who runs up the gut once again, picking up the remaining yardage for the first down. And Middlebury is definitely looking like they are getting ready to take a shot. As he is wide open, but it was underthrown. However, there was a roughing the passer, so Middlebury will pick up the first down. A couple plays later here, second and 11, and Colas is once again sacked in the backfield. Makes it a third and 14 now, and Middlebury will try to pick up the rest of the yards via the pass, but they get sacked once again. So, once a promising drive. Oh, wait a minute. They're actually going to go for it on 4th and 22, but they decide to do the captain check down. It's going to be a turnover on downs, and Amherst is going to get some really nice field position. We just got to see one of these teams take advantage of said field position here. As Amherst will still have a chance to pick up some points potentially before the end of the half, but it looks like that's not quite going to happen as... We're going into halftime. It is still a 7-0 game. Uh, both teams definitely could be playing better on offense as, you know, Anhurst has a slight edge, 100-85, to but, you know, neither team is really taking control of the game even though both teams had multiple opportunities to seize the momentum. It'll be interesting to see who can find that offensive rhythm first here in the second half. I think that's going to be the difference between winning this game of the week and losing on this game of a week in prime time a prime time that is better of course than your average Thursday night game second and six though from Middlebury Polis is going to drop back to pass he has plenty of time he doesn't see anybody so he's just going to go ahead and scramble and slides down but not before getting the first down as Middlebury is gets it to just about the 44 yard line as on the second and 13 he drops back to pass but Oliver actually gets in the backfield, makes it a third and 17. So we have an extremely long pass play, and they he gets sacked in the backfield once again for the quarterback sack. So now here we go. Amherst tries to pitch it, and there's another miscommunication. Middlebury's going to fall on it, and ladies and gentlemen, Middlebury 
I thought they were just going to go for the extra point, but looks like they're going for two. They feel momentum's on their side, but of course they miscalculated. And now, even though they got the touchdown off the fumble recovery, they still find themselves down 6-7. to seven. Definitely a more head-scratching play calling that I've seen so far during these Week 1 slate of games. But here we go. Middlebury does have the ball right back. And going to throw it up the gut to Viles. He's going to take the carry up the middle for a gain of 8 yards. Which leads to this third and two. And they try to run the triple option. But Amherst was ready for it. And they make the stand. Which means they have to punt it away back to these Amherst Mammoths. So now Kobo. He's going to throw it to the right hand side. He gets tackled in the backfield. Both teams once again. You know, I think this has been the moral of the story so far. Both teams have had a very difficult time. Just seizing the momentum as you know, both teams had an opportunity to take the lead and right now we have a score like this where it's just a very defensive battle a lot of sacks going on on both sides as we're going into probably one of the last plays of the third quarter Kobo is going to drop back the pass he's going to try to throw up the left hand side but it's tipped away for an incompletion so Middlebury does get some nice field position uh, thanks to backing up Amherst on their drive they start off in the 40-yard line of their own territory and get a nice play to end the third quarter. But Amherst only has a 7-6 lead. It's definitely been a really ugly ball game as Middlebury only has 39 yards passing. But they might double up on it as Paulus, he gets the reception and now Middlebury is outside of the red zone. They find themselves on Amherst's 26-yard line looking to take their first lead of the game and they are going to do just that, ladies and gentlemen, as Craner is able to get the score off of the double post move. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we have the 21st ranked Middlebury Panthers taking the lead on the number two team in the country. It's going to come down to this final quarter, of course, and Amherst is not going to give up. They throw it deep. But it falls harmlessly to the ground for an incompletion. So now here we go. Second and 11 here. Post is going to drop back the pass. And once again, Amherst is just living in the backfield for uh, just making a really difficult time for Middlebury as they go with the Freddie Kitchens call and run it, run a draw play on a third and 16. No surprises they don't get the first down. And Amherst has the ball right back. But Frondorf, the guy who got the first touchdown reception for Amherst, he gets behind the defense once again for a gain of about 30 yards on the play, giving Amherst some nice field position to work with. But they stall out once again, and with 6-10, you know, the stadium is starting to feel it in the air. They might, they are sensing an upset in the air, ladies and gentlemen, as Polis, he's going to run it up, a, up the gut once again. Making it a third and three. Middlebury would really like to try and try to get as much time off the clock as possible because they know that both offenses are struggling. So they can just play keep away as much as humanly possible. But as I say, the offenses are struggling. Middlebury is starting to wake up. Lady gets the, the ball up the seam for 20 for a nice first. But then as I praise their offense, they throw an interception. So now Amherst has the opportunity to take the lead here with four minutes to go in the ball game. What a critical interception. You can't throw that pass if you're Middlebury's quarterback. You got to take a sack or a scramble if you don't see anybody. Try to get some time off the clock. But thankfully, for now, Amherst is being held at bay. However, it looks like Amherst you know, is able to get a free and out. So Amherst will have one more chance to tie this game. And Kobe, he's going to try to scramble. It's a quarterback sack. Amherst will now face a third and nine. What's going to be a critical play in this ball game? He's going deep. He's going to have Pammer up the left hand side. And they are just outside of the red zone. Only 20 something yards away from potentially winning this ball game so now Middlebury 
They need to get a stop here with 1.30 left to go. And they completely forget about Almanzar, who is going to immediately tie this ball game. But look at this, ladies and gentlemen. They are going to actually go for two here. They Hopefully they get it, and it doesn't. They don't convert it, so instead of taking a one-point lead, it's going to be a tie ball game with 1.30 left. Middlebury is going to go ahead and kick it off because it looks like the Middlebury Panthers are going to have one more chance to potentially win this ball game for the Middlebury Faithful. He's going to break off a tackle. He has a little bit of a lane, and he's going to be tackled on the 32-yard line. They still have all three timeouts left. And so with 123 left, they're going to try to make something happen here. Polis is going to run up the gut. It's a decent game, but it's a holding penalty. So now instead, it's a second and 16. And Polis, he's going to drop back. And the right guard simply gets outran. And so now we have a third and 20 with 19 seconds left. Going to throw it up the right side, and it's dropped. So it looks like we will have overtime here in Middlebury. Both teams are tied at 13 after four quarters of play. So now Middlebury is going to chance to get the ball first here. As Paulus, he's going to run it up the gut for a first down. And sitting on Amherst's 11-yard line. And then this throw right here, it's caught for a touchdown ladies and gentlemen but then they decide to go for two once again Middlebury's coach is extremely aggressive and I gotta give him credit for it hopefully this play works out for him because if they don't get it and Amherst scores this could be brutal and he has somebody in the right corner but the right receiver runs away so now all Amherst has to do is get the touchdown and get the extra point here. So here we go. Third and ten. Throw up the right seam. And it's knocked away. Which means Amherst is going to have one more opportunity to keep this game going. And Kobo is sack. And so just like that, ladies and gentlemen, the number two team in the land is going to fall. Middlebury, the 21 first ranked team in the country, is going to beat the second rank Amherst Mammoths 19 to 13. Wow, what an exciting turn of events. But hey, thank you guys so much for tuning into this broadcast of the Maximum Football Game of the Week presented by Canuck Studios. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you leave a like as well as hit that subscribe button if you're brand new, as I would truly appreciate it. Until then, I will see you guys next time. Take care.